In this video, I'll be showing you some of my photographs of Jupiter and Saturn on the sky in relation to the upcoming conjunction, December 21st, 2020. I'm recording this in the middle of November of 2020. So the conjunction has uh, interesting aspects to it. In my first video, I recorded a definition of the conjunction, described that, and describe the uh, December 21st, 2020 event. In the third video in the series, this is the second video I'm recording right now. In the third video, I'll describe why the conjunctions for Jupiter and Saturn on the sky occur about every 20 years. So to see these other videos, to find them easily, I'd suggest you subscribe to my YouTube channel and view my playlist that's titled Astronomy, Images, and General Interest. Then look for the videos with the titles Jupiter-Saturn 2020 Conjunction. So, on August 11th, 2020, I live in the southwest suburbs of Omaha, and this was not totally dark, and street lights on, house lights were on, but uh, an interesting photograph to give you kind of the scale with a house. I'm across the street from these two homes. But Saturn and Jupiter on the sky, and we have the teapot asterism in Sagittarius I've highlighted here. Unfortunately, we can't see these lines on the sky for the asterism, but you can see the faint stars perhaps uh, at these intersections. Uh, the two planets were east of the constellation of Sagittarius. Again, this is not the constellation. This is an asterism that's embedded inside the constellation of Sagittarius. My method for uh, making the measurements, all the photographs were taken with Canon 70D digital camera mounted on a tripod. Um, I then brought the photos into a Picasa a software program for photography and cropped them and edited them at such that the brightness was at a level where I could see the stars, the star field around uh, Jupiter and Saturn. I then selected three stars, um, Pi Sagittarius and HIP 95965, HIP 96274. So I, I measured two distances on the photograph between these pairs of stars, uh, measured in centimeters. Also measured the distance in centimeter between the centers of the images of Jupiter and Saturn. So I have some centimeter distances on each photograph, but each photograph is a little different scale. Uh, the cropping is not exact, so there is a little difference in magnification from one photograph to the other. So I found the right ascension and declination coordinates for these stars using the Stellarium Planetarium Program. And then uh, find, using these coordinates, I put those into a distance calculator, the angular distance calculator at this website, celestialwonders.com. Um, putting in the right ascension and declination, then you click a button, and it tells me the angle between the objects at those coordinates. I took those angular distances and divided by my centimeter distance I measured on my computer monitor between these what I'll call reference stars, and I got an angular scale of how many degrees per centimeter on the photographs. Typically is about 0.3 degree per centimeter. Then I multiplied the angular scale by the distance in centimeters between Jupiter and Saturn. This produced an angular distance between Jupiter and Saturn, and I estimate that uh, angle is accurate, plus or minus 0.2 degrees. Of course, the main error is uh, my measurements of the distance between the reference stars and between Jupiter and Saturn. I just put a, a ruler up on the monitor on the screen. Uh, I didn't bother printing out the images. I uh, didn't want to take the time or paper and ink to uh, do that. So they're relatively accurate, and I did double check with Stellarium um, what it predicted the angular distance. Well, it gave me the coordinates for Jupiter and Saturn. I calculated the angular separation again using this website, and they're completely in agreement. So Jupiter and Saturn, September 13th. 8.1 degrees apart, again plus or minus 0.2. Uh, on the photograph could be 7.9 up to 8.3. Uh, 
8.1 degrees plus or minus 0.2 degrees. My reference stars here, uh, right above the 5 of 95, 965, that star is the one reference star. Pi Sagittarius is the star right up here. And then uh, 96, 274, the star right above the 9, in between the P and the 9. Those were my reference stars. I have those stars on every photograph. So I would measure the distance in centimeter here. I measure the distance in centimeters between these two reference stars. And then I measure the distance in centimeters between Saturn and Jupiter. And my uh, angular scale, degrees per centimeter, was consistent for these two reference lines. Um, and I'm confident that I have good numbers for the angular separation of Jupiter and Saturn as we go through here. So 8.1 degrees September 13th, 7.4 degrees on September 30th. And I'd point out this line of stars, one, two, three, four, a nice kind of straight line just by coincidence on the sky of stars. These are fixed objects on our sky, pretty much fixed. The stars do move a little bit, but um, not over the months that we're talking about the, for these measurements. So 7.4 degrees apart for uh, uh, September 30th. Seven degrees apart on October 6, Jupiter's coming up to these four stars, this line. And October 11th, 6.8 degrees apart. And again, if you're, I don't know how good an image you have, but you can see satellite of Jupiter uh, in these images. And now we're moving up this line of four stars, 5.6 degrees between Saturn and Jupiter. It's getting smaller. October 29th, 5.4 degrees apart between the objects. November 5th, 4.6 degrees apart. And again, you can see these four stars. When we started, Jupiter was in this position. It's moving, headed towards Saturn. Saturn is also moving left to the east on the star field and up a little bit as uh, time goes on here. Uh, but Jupiter is moving faster in angles per day, degrees per day across the, the star field. Uh, Jupiter has less time to go around the sun than Saturn. That's described in my first video in this series. Um, and then my last photo, 11-16, November 16th. And I'll be taking more photos in the future and modifying this, uh, this video maybe add on a fourth video actually but here 3.6 degrees apart so we're we're coming closer to the time of conjunction a very good uh, wikipedia article about what they call the great conjunction the conjunction between these two great planets jupiter and saturn um, so they have a article titled great conjunction there's an underscore between the t and the c um, these conjunctions occur about every 20 years um, in my third video, I'll explain why it is about every 20 years. It's going to be very close this year, only 0.1 degrees apart between the two objects. Um, according to this Wikipedia article, this is the closest conjunction of these two planets since 1623. That's a while ago. But in 2080, the conjunction will also be about this close. How close is it? Well, the moon is about 0.5 degrees wide on the sky. This conjunction, these two objects will be 0.1 degrees apart on the sky. So about one-fifth of the diameter of the full moon. Um, and in astronomy terms, this is a close conjunction. For other YouTube videos, if you have an interest in physics and astronomy, I'm a retired uh, teacher of physics and astronomy. These are very rudimentary, simple websites. I do not use cookies. I do not collect your email. I do not collect any information about you. Uh, I do not ask for donations. Uh, on these websites, you'll see the uh, videos listed that I've recorded. It's getting to be about 500 uh, physics and astronomy videos, a title, a uh, how many minutes long it is, and a little description. I hope uh, you view them and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you find them interesting. Keep watching the sky.